Now the Georgia Southern man, it's Matt Breda. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. On the handoff, this is Breda. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Well, this defense for the Falcons, terrific last week in the season opening victory. Anytime you can hold a team to less than 10 points, your expectation of winning that game has to be sky high. In fact, you'd be absolutely stunned to come away with a loss in that one. Could you imagine going to the press conference and trying to explain that? Third play in this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. Wilson. They'll dump this down to Matt Breda. And he is going to have a box first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. Now Wilson on first down. He'll get this out wide to Eckler. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Throwing is Wilson. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Brandon, we saw these defenders flying to the football in their win last week, and nothing has changed. They're still moving around quickly and forcing incompletions. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Now Wilson. This one complete to Jalen Waddle. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. On first down, Wilson. Over the middle, and there's a diving catch. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. On first down, here's Breida. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. From the gun, it's Wilson. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Tredavious White with a pick. And the Falcons are going to get the football here as they force the INT on the game's opening drive. This one just shy of the 35 to the 34. A big play that time through the air. 32 yards. Much more room to operate under after the big play. Here's first and 10. Running left, Taylor. 
And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, at the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to Huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? We're scoreless after one. Second quarter now, Falcon football, as they've got it with a third down coming up. They fake the handoff, now Murray. Oh, he'll look downfield for Kittle. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? Oh, a big decision here early. Look at this. They're going to go for it on their own side of the field. They're going for it. Hits Murray, eluding the pressure right. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. A gain of 18 on the play. First down, Atlanta. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 41. And now the Bucs deciding to take a timeout defensively. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. Murray now on first down. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Winds up and lets it go for Samuel, and that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. It's so easy to focus on the speed and elusiveness of Kyler Murray, but as he shows right there, don't sleep on the arm strength. And we knew that this offense was going to try and put pressure on the secondary. That was something they talked about with us. They knew that they had an advantage, pressed it, and there you go. Big play for a touchdown on their very first possession. Extra point try, good by Gano, and that makes the score 7-0. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. Here comes Jalen Waddle from his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25 yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. Of course, they'd like to forget the ending, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Now a pass here caught by Hunter Henry. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now a give to Breda. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Brings up second and nine at the 44-yard line. Right there, right there. 
They go play action now. Wilson. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Play action. Now Wilson. Throw left side complete. That's Henry. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. Defense will take over right near midfield at the 49-yard line. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons' offense at the line. Now, early on, you know, Charles, every game could be called a measuring stick game, but I think when it comes within your division like this, it's a measuring stick game with a little extra intrigue. I would agree with that totally because all division games have a little extra to them, but I like where this game is situated because at this stage of the season, it has that little extra juice, but at the same time, it's not a make or break if this were, let's say, week 15, 16, somewhere in that neighborhood. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. A five-yard game on the play. And the Falcon first down. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. A reminder, coming up at halftime, we'll head to Orlando. Standing by there, Jonathan Coachman. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL in this second week of the regular season. A first down run, good for about three. Second and seven coming up. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Here's Murray. He'll let it go deep for Beckham. And it's incomplete. Took a shot. down marker at the 31 it's third down from the gun Murray dancing to his left toward the sideline did he keep the feet in yes he got them both down says the side judge and that's good enough for a first down now that's all about making something happen as a quarterback because instead of forcing something on third down how about him buying some time outside of the pocket waiting for someone to come open. And when he did, he put it on him for a big play and a first down. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone, here's the Heisman Trophy winner, Murray. And he's going to go down back at the 27-yard line. He's sacked. 
After the sack on first down, Murray rolling to his right. And I think the ball's out, but this will fortunately wind up out of bounds. Can almost see inside his face mask there, the look of <laughs> relief. He coughed it up, but it goes out of bounds. They keep it. Someone carrying around the lucky horseshoe, aren't they? If I were him, I'd go out and play the lottery after that one. A very fortunate man. And they're operating in plus territory here. They're thinking points. Definitely don't want to lose the football at this juncture. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. Murray now to throw. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. So out now comes the field goal unit for the Falcons. Gano's kick is good, and the lead moves to 10 zip. So that one on target, and it adds to this first half lead. And maybe we're too early to worry too much about one score lead, two score lead, et cetera, but this is where you kind of start banking those points that come in helpful later on. And they're gonna start this drive in pretty good shape up past the 30. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And with him down two scores, you wonder if they might try and put something together, even if it's just to get into field goal range. They'll start on the ground with Breda. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. To throw is Wilson. Caught by the tight end, Ertz. And he goes out right around the 39. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. Third and two, now Wilson. He's going to loft one deep left side here. That's caught inside the 20. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. 57 Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Buying time to his left. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Second and 10. They go counter with Breda. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Five yards, now it's third and five. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit from the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Sanders kick is good. So we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top. As we toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, it's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report.
All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. The Falcons back to receive. They've got the lead, and they'll get this football as the second half gets underway. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. Yeah, he'll be out of bounds, just shy of the 30, right about the 29. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin too. Second down, another run with Taylor. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Chalk that up as a four-yard loss. And now it's third down. Now Murray off play action. Slings this deep from McLaurin. Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. Eddie Jackson picks it. And the Bucs are going to have it here at their own 15. That is just what this defense was hoping for, an interception on the opening possession of this third. He didn't want to surrender a touchdown and fall even farther behind. And we've gotten to know this team a little bit, haven't we? Couldn't you just see their defensive leaders telling the offensive guys, telling the quarterback, don't worry, we got you to start things off. You take it from there. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And they just got a little help from their defense forcing the turnover. Now can they make that pay off in points? They need to, partner. They're down on the scoreboard. Need to take advantage of those opportunities. And this is a good one right in front of them. A gain of three, second down. Complete. It's Henry. First down and much more for Henry. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They go play action with Wilson. Throw left side is complete on the diving effort. Working with a second and four. And the 
Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. Third down, Wilson. Airing it out, looking for Ridley. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Well, the passing windows are just not there. That's just another example of how great this defense has been all game long. And that's exactly what a top 10 defense can do. They can really change the game tempo and frustrate you as you try to execute offensively. Here's A.J. Cole now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. And just a single punt for him in the loss last week as he sends this one away. And oh, deep in his own territory, he coughs up the football. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. It's been a struggle all game for them on offense. This was a chance to maybe provide a little bit of a spark with a punt return. Unfortunately, <laughs> that spark got doused. Yeah, and you call special teams the third phase, but you see here it can be the first phase sometimes. That is so true, right? It can, it can ignite it one way or the other, and boy, that didn't help them at all. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Austin Eckler, his first touchdown of the new season. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away from tying up this football game. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. Put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And a nice job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped at the 14. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And their lead has evaporated in this third quarter. It's tied once more as they begin with a first and ten. And good job of just fighting through one tackle there to pick up about three. Second down coming up. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. From the 16, Murray. And he will find his man, Samuel, and mark him down way up close to the 40 at the 39. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Here's a run on first down that doesn't accomplish anything. In fact, he's going to be tackled behind the line for a loss of one. On second and 11 now, Murray. That's complete to McCaffrey. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 37. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action.
We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. From the shotgun to McCaffrey. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. To throw is Murray. He'll get this out wide here to McCaffrey. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Buck 17-yard line. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars. And he came through with a nice catch right there. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Touchdown, Falcons! George Kittle from 17 yards out. And the Falcons have taken the lead. Gano now to add the extra point. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. Waddle will return this from the end zone. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. Offense ready to get their drive started. And now after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. They run with Breida. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Now Wilson. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And at the seven yard line, the catch is made. Touchdown! talk about the mobility and the accuracy first, but the arm strength, that's what can turn Russ into danger, Russ. And I'm telling you, nothing will let up a crowd more than a play like that. Here in the stadium, all eyes were on the receivers streaking downfield, and you know everyone was thinking, throw it, he's open. What a connection there for the touchdown. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good, and we are tied here in the fourth quarter. Seventeen, seventeen. the score. All even to this point as the kick's away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. Well, they just gave up the score to tie it. That's the bad news. The good news, plenty of time in this fourth quarter to try to grab that lead back. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 47 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. The give to Taylor. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there, I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, 
you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. And now this defense trying to use the clock to their advantage. They'll take the timeout here with 2.08 left. And then they'll have another stop coming up at the two-minute warning. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. And now Murray's going to set up to throw. This one caught by Kittle. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. A nice display of powerful running. But it takes him only to the 7. He's dropped there. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they search for a score to break this time. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he's brought down right at the five-yard line. Give him two on the play. Now, what's the thinking here? Because a touchdown would be nice, but you've ensured yourself a chance at three in the lead. So how worried are you about the six? You're not very worried about if you're confident in your kicker. And if you've got a kicker who can put it through the post, you feel really good about trying to bleed that clock down. In an ideal scenario, your kicker puts it through the post as the clock hits zeros. Flush to his right, and he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Kyler Murray with touchdown number three in the game and six on the year. And the Falcons answer back with a touchdown of their own to break our tie and take the lead here in the fourth. They do tack on the extra point as well, and they will take a seven-point lead. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. Yeah, that'll be a little too hot to handle as it will skip through the end zone for a touchback here. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Wilson to throw. Oh, what a heck of an effort there as he'll make the diving catch. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Right there. Hey, Hero, Hero, Hero. Pick me up. Here we go. Here's Wilson. He's going to let it fly. And this is taken in at the five. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Jalen Waddle with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Bucs are an extra point away from tying this game here in the final minutes. Sanders now to add the extra point. Sweat. He puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. Nothing separating these two sides. 24 all our score as he sends this one away. 
And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play, but if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. Now Murray, this one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. And just a yard to go here on second down. They'll try the left side with Taylor. And he works free. Taylor's got the first down and more, and he'll be taken down at the 26. 86 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game. Juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle it. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in the football game. Here's a first and 10 at the 14 yard line. Back to throw. Murray escaping the pressure right. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Javon Holland. And the Buccaneers are going to have it here at their own nine-yard line. Well, they were in a great position to take the lead, Charles. Obviously, all they needed was a field goal to do that. They wanted the touchdown. Unfortunately, they're going to get neither. And you know every offense talks about the same thing each week, don't they, Brandon? They want to end every drive with a kick, whether it's a field goal attempt, a point after the touchdown, or at worst, a punt. This time they had that opportunity but didn't get it because you know the field shrinks that close to the end zone, and that allows the defense to tighten up their coverage, and they pick that one off. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. Waddle will return this from the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now. The ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. Throwing again on second down. Wilson. He'll dump this down to Matt Breida. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. 
And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. I don't want to overhype it, but this is a big early season game, especially an overtime win. That can give you a big boost going forward in the season. It certainly can, and I don't think you're overhyping it because cliches go out the window when you start to play overtime. And you're right, the winner of this game now, that's an extra boost moving forward. And it actually is an extra hurt for the team that loses because normally you shake it off. But in this situation, it lingers a little bit longer. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Love the idea, love the concept, but you got to leave a little room on the sideline so he can fade into it when he makes the catch. That was thrown too close to it for the receiver to make a play. Again, Wilson. He's going to fire one deep over the middle. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. So one first down on that drive, and that's it. Forced to take the deep shot on third down and couldn't hit it. Now they have to punt this one away. Here's A.J. Cole now on for a very important punt here in overtime. He'll return it from the six. A big boot that time. 57 yards, the official distance. And the Falcons will get it first and 10 from deep in their own territory. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. Their defense did its job. Got the stop. All they need is three, and this is over. Couldn't have done much else other than score themselves and end it. But they turned it back over to them, and now all they need is a field goal to win the game. An excellent job by the defense. Can the offense finish things off? Part one is done. Now part two. Second down, another run with Taylor. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. His drive flushed out right, and he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. Looks to me, partner, like he's learned a little bit because earlier in the game, I think he's trying to force a lot of throws into his windows that just weren't open. Yeah, the interceptions had plagued him, especially a second interception, really a bad throw. So maybe a better decision there. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think he learned from earlier in the game, and he's applying it now. 112 yards rushing for him now as he was just trying to will his guys to an overtime victory. Second down, another run with Taylor. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. But when you go from second and four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. On play action, it's Murray. Toward the sideline, did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge, and that's good enough for a first down. A big connection on that one, 30 yards. First and 10, Taylor now. And he'll get it down inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Five yards remain on second down. They fake the handoff. Now Murray eluding the pressure right. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in. But somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a game. On first down, Taylor. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Now another timeout called for by the offense. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. Second down, another run with Taylor. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. Now a second timeout called for by the defense. 
They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout. It'll be their second and final timeout, remember, here in overtime. We'll be back. Okay, so interesting here. A field goal would win this thing, but the kicking team on the sideline, and they're going for it on fourth down. Forced Murray fighting, lost the football. And this will go out of bounds, so they will lose yards on the play. And on fourth down, of course, it'll be a turnover on downs. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball to their territory. And he'll go out of bounds. Looks like right at the 15. So that's it. No double overtime until the playoffs rolled around, so that means this one ends at a tie. Yeah, that's ultimately unsatisfying for both teams, the fan bases. Heck, for us, True. we came here to see a winner, right? <laughs> we did. Winner and a loser. We didn't get it. We end up with a tie. Everyone walks away. A little just, bit, just little bit cranky on this one. Man. Yeah, in the bit. H, man. <laughs>